now let's look at another way of explaining what's happening with the bonding and getting the geometries of these molecules. You may have noticed that we've come up with molecules that are tetrahedral in shape, but when we learned about um, orbital shape, there weren't any that were tetrahedral. So we're going to kind of make sense out of that. Um, this first thing is just that we're defining a bond. A bond is when you have orbitals overlap and um, it takes two electrons to make a bond. And it's pretty simple when you have just hydrogen because s orbitals are spherical and so we've got them close together. They're overlapping. There are two electrons so that's a bond. Where you start getting into something new is when we look at what we call hybrid orbitals. Hybrid orbitals are where orbitals that existed before the bond um, recombine in order to form the bonds to another atom. So anyway, let's look at carbon. Um, these are all of carbon's electrons, but these up here in the second energy level are its valence electrons. And so what we're going to do, and this is done mathematically, but we're going to pretend like we're taking these orbitals that it has and we're going to recombine them, these hybrid, into a hybrid. So I'm going to combine these and get new orbitals. And when I do that, I'm going to get four. So I've got a new kind of orbital, a hybrid. I used four orbitals to make it, so that's why I get four out. Okay. And then um, I'm going to have a name for this. I'm going to call it um, S because it had an S orbital. And then I'll call it P because it, it had P orbitals, but it has three of the P's. So I'm going to put an exponent there. And this whole thing, this whole thing is the name of this type of orbital that we have um, these are, there are four of them, and they're called sp3. So just so we're clear, when you take one s orbital and you combine it with three p orbitals, you get four sp3 orbitals. And I will refer to these as the sp3 hybrid. They're a set of orbitals. Well, what do you think the geometry would be if you have four orbitals? How would they get apart from each other? And it might be like you would think. I have four of these orbitals. And so the shape of those are going, it's going to be tetrahedral. So these are the sp3s and there are four of them. I'm drawing um, this methane. So let me go ahead and add the hydrogen atoms. And the hydrogen atoms just have s orbitals and they are overlapping. And so this right here where they're overlapping, that's the bond. Well, you can combine different types of orbitals. And, you know, I chose to combine all of the p orbitals. What if I just took one of the S's and one of the P's? And so let's see um, what geometries I can get from that. So if I took an S orbital and combined it with a P orbital, how many orbitals would I have in my new hybrid? And so to get that, I'm basically going to add the exponents here because the exponents told me how many orbitals were going in. So I took one s orbital, one p orbital, I'm going to have two new orbitals and those orbitals are going to be called sp orbitals. 
And the shape, what do you think the shape would be if you have two orbitals and they repel each other? They'll be linear. Next, if I have a hybrid that's made from an S and two of the P's, Adding up the exponents, I see that I'm going to have three orbitals in the hybrid because I used three orbitals to make it. And the shape, the geometry of those orbitals will be trigonal planar. Next, sp3, I took four orbitals to make that so I'll get four orbitals out of it and with four it'll be tetrahedral that's the one we just did next I've got five orbitals that went into this adding the exponents remember the exponents are telling me what orbitals went into that were recombined to make the hybrid and with five, I'm going to have trigonal, bipyramidal. Last, I have six orbitals going in, and my geometry will be octahedral. Now notice something. The number of orbitals corresponds is very similar to the number of electron groups. So when you do these shapes, you can see that if you had six electron groups, this would be your geometry, your electron geometry. So it's not really the same thing, but the numbers are the same. So this is like okay, so we've kind of already uh, done that. So how do we take um, our Lewis dot structures and decide what kind of hybrid orbitals it has? You do your Lewis dot structure and you count the number of electron groups again. And then the number of groups is equal to the number of orbitals and I'm talking about the hybrid orbitals. And then from the hybrid number of hybrid orbitals, you can get the type of orbital. Look at these types. You see how they're in order from two, you have to have at least two to make a hybrid, right? Two to three and so forth. I've counted them up there. These are the only possibilities. You'll never have, you know, like if you have two orbitals in the hybrid, it'll never be SD. That's not a possibility. If you have five, it has to be these, these five. If you have four, you'll never have S, P, 2, D, say. They count up in this order, and it is a, a definite um, pattern. So if I have, um, remember this also works as the electron group. So if I have four electron groups, my hybrid is sp3. If I have two electron groups, my hybrid is sp.